discussed the details of intolerant attitude. Number 1. Stereotype behavior of human. The ancestor of every action is a thought. Raoul Waldo Emerson. Prejudices are nourished by negative stereotypes of individuals or groups of people. The word, stereotype, is derived from the Greek words stereos, solid, hard, petrified, and typos, pattern, mold. Walter Lippmann, an American journalist, introduced the concept of stereotype to social science in 1922 in his often quoted work, Public Opinion. He assumed that stereotypes, pictures in our heads, at least partially, are culturally determined phenomena and are necessary to simplify a complex reality. Stereotypes are overgeneralizations, often erroneous and oversimplifying, about reality, other people, based on assumptions and misinformation rather than on facts. Stereotypes do not take under consideration enormous varieties of human diversity belonging to a given group. They do not consider either current circumstance, which surround individuals. What is worse, stereotypes can lead to prejudices and discriminatory behaviors. Stereotypes can become so ingrained that people accept them without question. Social stereotypes blind people to individual differences so they ignore each person's uniqueness. They are sets of convictions associated with a group, generalized to all its members. We learn stereotyping as children listen to the comments of parents, teachers, and our peers absorbing their opinions, observing their behaviors, watching TV, listening to music, reading textbooks and comics. Stereotyping makes life easier because it does not require an independent thought process. It makes the world seem simpler so we can feel safer. Since the 60s there have been tendencies to treat stereotypes as normal processes of categorization, with emphasis on arbitrary characteristics of some social categories. Stereotypes as any other categories are stored in our long-term memory as cognitive representations called schemata. We activate them automatically being unaware and with little effort. There is no pathology in stereotyping, but the content of stereotypes may be pathogenic. Traditionally stereotypes were perceived as particularly rigid and resistant to change. Not all researchers nowadays share this view. They serve also various functions, oversimplify complex reality and allow categorizing when information is limited. Main functions of stereotypes are Adjusting, supplying the feeling of cognitive control in social situations, defensive and reducing fear, improving self-esteem, especially when positive self-stereotype is confronted with a negative hetero-stereotype, indicative of distinctions between dominant groups and the minority group, strengthening in group value against taking foreign values, channeling aggression and justifying attack on others, assuring foreseeing human behavior, communicative, manipulative, political, and propaganda. The less information we have about a person, the more likely we are to respond to him or her in terms of stereotypes. The stereotypes of various ethnic, cultural, or religious groups are widely known to members of a society, and may often affect behavior. What can we do to reduce stereotypes in our lives? 1. Focus on every person as an individual. 2. Become more aware of stereotypes and how they interfere with our ability to perceive and interact with people. 3. Remember that there are more differences within a group than between groups. 4. Recognize that we are all part of many groups, none of which can totally explain or define who we are. 5. Learn to look at things from another person's point of view. 6. Be willing to learn more about the culture and background of people different from yourself. Number 2. Prejudice. A great many people think they are thinking when they are merely rearranging their prejudices. William James. There can be no war without prejudice. Often color, race, and religion are partial causes of prejudice. The word, prejudice, comes from the Latin words pre, before, and judicum, judgment. The term prejudice is often used synonymously with, bias, and it is defined as a negative, emotional attitude toward certain groups and their members based on inaccurate stereotypes. Prejudices give the feeling of controlling reality. Since they allow describing the world in a supposedly consistent way, they fulfill the feeling of security. When we think of others we should realize that we do not react to reality, but to our image of reality. Prejudice is defined as a negative attitude, emotion or behavior towards members of a group on account of their membership of that group. 
Some researchers believe that personality factors are crucial in determining prejudice, some see situational and socioeconomic factors as a determinant factor. Prejudiced attitudes, manifested most frequently within ethnic and gender groups, can be already found among very small children. People have the tendency to categorize the world and underline differences between various categories and diminish differences within a category. The categorization process causes stereotyping. When groups have conflicting goals and are in competition, it may also lead to prejudice. Many attitudes toward others depend upon one's childhood guidance, as well as attitudes molded by parents, teachers, media, and social environment. What helps to overcome negative stereotypes and prejudices? There are several factors in challenging our own bias and that of others. Among them are, changing social climate such that prejudice becomes contrary to norms, adoption of tolerant child-rearing practices, contact between members of different groups, provided that certain conditions are met, equal status of groups, support from authority, i.e. teacher, the contact is intimate and pleasant, cooperation between members of particular groups, setting examples of positive attitudes toward other groups and tolerance in mass media, learning about our own religious and cultural heritage, learning about other religious, cultural heritage, history, and customs, acknowledging differences and similarities, among and between individuals and groups, revealing the uniqueness of each individual, building awareness of diversity, ancestry, traits, and customs that other ethnic, religious or cultural groups have, enhancing self-esteem and self-security to become confident about ourselves, developing critical thinking skills in order to distinguish between reality and fiction, fact and opinion, understanding that overgeneralizations may lead to negative stereotypes, building empathy toward victims of prejudice through direct experience, examining our own and other people's behavior toward others, interacting with peers who differ from us.